Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bondo here. Today we're going to talk about kind of a special pedal, but it's a pretty common pedal. I would say most guitars have had their hands on one at least a time or two. Maybe never. I don't know. Maybe this is your first experience with it. The Boss DS2. This was first introduced in 1987. The uh, sequel to the Boss DS1 Distortion. This pedal's about 35 years old. Can run for president now, and I'd, I'd definitely vote for it. The main difference between this pedal and the DS1, mainly being the remote function, where you can select between Distortion 1 and Distortion 2. Even add like a little foot switch in here, which I've never done, I've never tried that. Don't know why, just not gonna. So you can switch between 1 and 2 freely. <laughs> Mostly, I just leave this thing on too. I like it's a mid crunchy, you know, you can do a lot with it. This pedal is fairly common. There's not much rare about this. You can pick these up for about $50 used, maybe $100 new. You could probably go down the road and find one right now. I think they're just kind of growing on trees. This pedal's been kind of, it's it's been a love-hate relationship for me over the years because I always put it on my board and ultimately I would end up taking it off just because I, I would use it in the bedroom and it would sound great. Then I would get in a band setting where we would rehearse or practice and it just didn't mesh with the, the sound that I thought fit with the, the band I was in at the time. So main users of this pedal being John Frusciante, Kurt Cobain, Steve Vai, Prince, Rivers Cuomo... <laughs> Dave Navarro, Josh Klinghoffer, Pat Smear, Chris Shiflett, Matthew Bellamy. Those are all some great players and great bands. If it's good enough for them, it ought to be good enough for you and me, right? It's one of those things that you have to kind of tweak with and play with because even though you have that mid-rangey tone, it can be unpleasant sometimes. But I have a solution. I don't know if Kurt Cobain used it this way. I know that his settings were something like, I believe he had the level all the way up, the tone kind of cocked back here maybe about 10 or 11 o'clock, and the distortion cranked. I think he used mode 1. I don't know if he used mode 1 or 2. My ears hear mode two when I listen to the live stuff. Again, he's using a Mesa boogie. I'm not using that. John Frusciante, I guess back in the day, he used to just pretty much dime the thing. Just turn them all the way up. And if you try that at home, it's a bit much. So unless you're playing stadiums or arenas, you're, you're going to have to get an attenuator or something. But Also, John Frusciante has been using two of these pedals on his board lately. I think he's using one of these. The distortion's backed off. I think he kind of pushes the level all the way up on both of them. I know there's a lot of people out there that probably know more about the subject than me as far as who uses it and how they use it. Talk about it down below. Comments. These are the settings we're going to be dealing with. The solution that I found to make this pedal a little bit more usable, you put an overdrive in front of it, something light, something crunchy, not a whole lot of gain on it. So it's it's almost borderline clean, and I think that's kind of how John Frusciante uses this pedal. I think he's got a little crunch tone in front of it, like he's not just going straight clean from the amp and kicking this on. The pedal that I like to use with this, and I've tried a few, you can try a Tube Screamer or a Boss SD-1, whatever overdrive you like, but this is the one that I've been using. This is a 1991 by little boxes and and I'll, I'll play it with the pedal the the ds2 just by itself and then i'll show you what it sounds like when you put a good overdrive in front of it most of the examples uh, in this video are going to be nirvana tunes and red hot chili peppers nothing against prince or steve Vai. i'm just not that good here's clean and here's our crunch <laughs> it's not necessarily clean it is dirty, it's overdriven, but it's not.
If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Nirvana and Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think I can get a good, decent Green Day tone out of it, even uh, especially if you get the gain in front of it. I don't think if you have the the crunchy tone in front of it, I don't think it really works for much else. All right, so there you have it. We tested this thing, checked out some you know, very simplified settings to see what tones we can get out of it. The most fun is just tweaking these settings and finding out what you can do with it. This is basically just a fundamental idea of what this pedal can do. This is not a sponsored video. I just really like this pedal. So once again, thank you again for watching. I'm Bondo, and we'll see you later. <laughs>